we're here today at the St. Denis National Wildlife Area. This is the same spot where we've looked at a couple of soils previously. And today we're going to be focusing on the wetland soils. One of the interesting things about the St. Denis National Wildlife Area, actually one of the reasons it was created, was as a, a good spot for waterfowl habitat. This area, because of its hummocky topography, is characterized by a large number of these small depressions within the landscape. And so these are characteristically, these would be considered ephemeral wetlands. And so this spot where we're standing uh, here today is a good example of one of these low-lying positions in the landscape, uh, quite possibly formed when a large chunk of ice within the glacial till deposit melted, and so the, the overlying till collapsed, leaving this low-lying landscape position. Now, I describe it as an ephemeral wetland because every year this, these low-lying positions in hummocky landscapes fill in with water during the, the, the snowmelt period. And uh, basically, it, during the, the snowmelt, uh, there's already more snow in these lower landscape positions because it's drifted in over the course of the winter. Through the wind, wind tends to blow it into the low positions. It gets caught by the trees that are characteristic of, these, of, the, of the depressions. And snow accumulates here. Over the course of the spring snow melt then as well, because the remaining, the surrounding landscape is frozen, the underlying ground is frozen, there tends to be quite a bit of surface runoff into these low-lying posi positions as well. So we get standing water down here. And so what we're going to see is that gives rise to a, a very different suite of uh, soil properties than we've seen in some of the upland soils immediately adjacent to this, to this landscape position. Uh, so when I mentioned that these are, are meant for wild fa uh, waterfowl habitat, so the St. Denis wildlife area uh, is, there's a lot of research done in this area for looking at waterfowl breeding habits. And these types of low-lying uh, wetlands are key in terms of, in terms of the spring breeding, uh, spring breeding program for, for, uh, for ducks in the area. So they prefer these types of little, uh, these small wetlands each, each pair, of, each pair of ducks likes to have their own private little wetland, and so this would be a good example of that. Um, in terms of the parent material then, like I mentioned, this is a glacial, we're still in the hummocky glacial till landscape. Uh, we'd also, so we would refer to this as being part of the prey pothole region, and so we're in one of these potholes. And so the glacial till land, in, in, in this particular landscape position also has a bit of an overlay on top of it of finer material that's washed in or been deposited here uh, through er erosion from the surrounding upland positions, whether that be through uh, wind or water erosion and also through tillage erosion. So at previous points in, in this landscape's history, the surrounding uplands would have been uh, cultivated as well. Right now, they're still they're, they've been seeded to grass for about four years now, but at a different, uh, for much of the 20th century, the surrounding landscape was cultivated, and so there was significant deposition from that uh, uh, surface soil being washed into these lower landscape positions as well. Specifically, we're looking at a humic luvic glycol, where luvic is the great group that we're looking at, and humic is the subgroup of this particular soil. In terms of the, the central concept, or the, the main idea of the glycolic order, is that these are soils that are, are have undergone peri periodic uh, anoxic or anaerobic conditions. So like I mentioned, we're in one of these ephemeral wetlands within the St. Denis wildlife area. And so this area, every spring, is inundated with water. And so depending on how wet uh, sort of the, the, the broader climate is, the duration of saturation is going to vary. In wet years, it might be saturated well into June or July. In drier years, it might dry up more, more like this year in uh, late May or early June. But the, the result is that having those, those few months of, of saturated conditions in the early spring gives rise to a very distinct uh, suite of soil characteristics. The, the main characteristic of this particular soil, what, the, what tells us that it's a glycol, is that there's the presence of uh, glade or reduced colors and or models within 50 centimeters of the soil surface. And so what gives rise to these, these unique uh, characteristics has to do with the reducing environment. And so when we have anaerobic conditions, uh, typically any of the, the microorganisms or any of the processes that are taking place in the soil, uh, you need to have some sort of a, a terminal electron acceptor. Under reducing conditions, uh, under anaerobic conditions, we don't have any oxygen to serve as that terminal electron acceptor. And so we're looking for some other form of, uh, uh, of uh, um, material to serve as that, as that acceptor. 
And so in some conditions we might see nitrate or sulfates acting as the acceptor. But in this, in, we also frequently see iron oxide serving as the electron acceptor. So under the reducing conditions, iron oxides, where iron uh, under uh, oxidized conditions is in the form of Fe3+, under reducing or saturated conditions, it gets reduced, it, it, it serves as the electron acceptor and, and goes, gets reduced to the, the 2 plus state. In that state, it's more mobile and can move through the profile. And so because iron, as we know, it it's, it's basically rusts. And so within the soil, when we've got uh, these reducing conditions, the iron goes into solution and can be moved through the profile. So iron is, can actually be removed through the, from the profile. But a lot of that movement also can occur, uh, it, it gets concentrated within the pores. And so as the soil then subsequently dries out, where we've got a lot of this iron in solution, then we end up with the iron being oxidized within these, within these pores or spaces within the structural units. And so basically then it, it goes back to the Fe3 plus form as when it becomes oxidized, and that basically appears as rust. And that's what we're referring to when we talk about models within the soil. So one of the characteristics then of the glycolic order is the presence of this duller colored matrix where the iron has been removed under anaerobic conditions. And then the concentration of these basically rusty models in the, in the pore spaces or the spaces between the structural units. And so when that occurs within 50 centimeters of the soil surface, we say that it's, that it's glade.